Our work uh, began um, more than six years ago uh, before we actually did the consolidation uh, by our original organizations. <clears throat> Initially, it was not directed towards uh, suicide prevention, uh, but really just helping our people through tough issues. The traumas seen by firefighters and EMS personnel, um, if not uh, handled well, uh, can lead to some behaviors that are damaging both for the, per the, uh, the personnel and their families. So that was our, that was our purpose. That was why we, we got into that. Both departments had EAPs. Uh, both had department chaplains. Uh, South Metro, though, had a program that uh, was a peer support team. And when we consolidated, we adopted that. And we have a three-prong approach now. We, we still have the EAPs, we still have uh, the uh, department chaplains, and we have the peer support team. Uh, currently, our uh, offerings for EAPs, we have two of them for people to choose from, and they see about 360 contacts a year, um, uh, both the families and, and personnel. Even though the EAP is, is well used, uh, we really think that the support team, the peer support team, is the backbone and really our first line of support uh, for our employees because they're so accessible. They're, they're working side by side with them every day. <clears throat> Each team member is required to, to attend a 40-hour critical incident stress management class so they're able to diffuse and debrief uh, others. Uh, several of the team members have already attended uh, suicide awareness classes and prevention workshops. They also meet monthly uh, with a clinical psychologist for continuing uh, education. Uh, more recently, suicide prevention has become a much higher profile, both in our department and nationwide in the fire service. Uh, th thanks to uh, Captain Jeff Dill and the Firefighter Behavioral Health Alliance, we now have a central point to gather data uh, regarding firefighter uh, suicides. Uh, this was, was never, uh, no data was collected in the past. And, and even with only 10% of the departments in the country contributing towards that, that's the estimate, uh, we're seeing a very steep rise in, in what we know about uh, firefighter suicides. This trend has prompted us to become more uh, active and intentional uh, to begin the change in the fire service uh, culture of not asking for help. We invited uh, a chief from Illinois, Patrick Kenny, uh, to come and, and speak to our personnel. He spoke uh, personally about the death of his son uh, through suicide. And his point that he made to us was, it's okay to talk about suicide, and it's okay to ask your coworker if they need help. And it was, it was a very uh, impacting uh, program for, for all of us, uh, but several people went up to him afterwards and shared their stories with uh, their own experience or, or people in their families, their loved ones. Outcomes. Unfortunately, I'm more able to tell you what our activities are than, than outcomes. And I think this is um, true of, of prevention type activities. I wish I could tell you how many marriages were saved, careers prolonged, and uh, suicides prevented, but I can't. Uh, this is especially frustrating at, at budget time. As with other prevention act efforts, sometimes what didn't happen, uh, you don't know about. I can tell you that the peer support team uh, sees well over 100, makes over 100 contacts each year uh, with our personnel and, the, and their family uh, members. <clears throat> and our peer support team is activated uh, for critical calls uh, when there's a, a significant call that has an uh, emotional impact. When I asked two of the team members 
for a little bit of, of stories of what, what they're doing. I, I got to that I think uh, add towards the, uh, you know, what is the impact. One peer support team member reported to me that just two weeks after she took the uh, suicide prevention class, uh, she was called by a person who uh, asked for help for a coworker. A coworker would not talk to her on the phone, but through that other uh, intermediary, she, uh, she walked them through the process, and he is now in, in uh, seeking professional help. Another peer support member advised they responded to a station after a, a particularly bad call and uh, defused two members of the uh, medic crew. The, <coughs> excuse me, the diffusing lasted about 45 to 50 minutes and uh, they allowed the crew to walk through uh, what their, their thoughts and perspectives were on that call. The, the call did happen the same day, uh, or the diffusing happened the same day as the call, so they were right on it. And uh, both of the, the medic crews uh, said they go off duty for four days at a time, so they were just about to leave on a four day and uh, they said, you know, it was, it was very helpful because they would have dwelt on that call for that f full four days. So being able to be there right away uh, helped them. The peer support team checked back during their time off and, uh, and then when they came back on duty and, and they, were, uh, they were good. So where do we go from here? The future is um, we are going to expand our team We've lost a couple people through uh, retirements. Uh, we're making a strong uh, commitment uh, in our budget next year to increase our training, both for the team and for our personnel. We are sending all members of the peer support team to a 16-hour train the trainer class so they can teach others in the organization resiliency skills. Uh, we wanna keep moving forward that cultural shift um, and we uh, are starting even with the recruits now to impress upon them that, uh, and we've always said that being physically fit was import important in our job. Uh, but now we're teaching the recruits that it's just as important to stay mentally fit as it is physically fit. And hopefully that will help them through their, their career. Thank you. <laughs>